Commander Keen's Invasion of the Vortigons really revolutionized the gaming scene when it hit the PC market in the year 1990. Well, it did the right thing and a year later followed it up with a sequel. And of course, since I've covered Commander Keen Invasion of the Vorticons, it would be criminal if I didn't follow it up with a sequel too. Commander Keen in Goodbye Galaxy. The sequel came out exactly one year and one day later than the original game, on December 15th of 1991. This time around it was split only in two episodes, Secret of the Oracle and the Armageddon Machine. But the question is, was it better? And in my opinion the answer is HELL YES. In every possible aspect, graphics, gameplay controls, sound design, levels. Get your DOS machine or DOS box ready, type in Keen4E or Keen5E and get greeted by a shameless shout out to the Terminator intro, followed by a sweet looking title screen featuring our hero. Seriously loving the title screens, even though they use just 16 EGA colors, it still stands the test of time. After that you'll land in Keen's computer wrist, which serves as this game main menu. From here you can start a new adventure, load or save one, fiddle with the options, or waste your time by playing Paddle War. Which initially sounds exciting, but it's just a Pong minigame. Start up the game, choose your difficulty and get welcomed by the new and improved game engine. The first thing on the list of improvements are the graphics. The levels are now presented in a 2.5D fashion, sprites are much bigger, animations are more detailed, fluid and every level has a nice backdrop now, including woods that are high as balls. There's basically a lot more happening on the screen now, with every possible thing being animated and it's really pleasing to the eye. I especially like the Flintstone houses. There are many level themes and its variety is really nice since the levels in the first trilogy looked a little samey. What's the convenient plot device this time around? Short story is the Shikari want to destroy the galaxy. In the first part, Keen has to save a couple of old dudes that operate an oracle that will tell Keen what the Shikari are up to. Second part is about Keen being on Shikari's Omegamatic as he destroys it. It slices, it dices, it'll blow your house in- wait, wrong line. It causes a hundred thousand light year diameter quantum explosion. The story, just like previously, is also accessible in the help section, although this time it's split into pages featuring little comic-like graphics, which are also used as ending cutscenes for both games. Commander Keen 4 and 5 feature vastly improved controls. Gone is the weird jump delay and full stop like I mentioned in my previous video and the shooting button is separate from the pogo button. Although you can turn that option back on. But why? This is better in every way. Not to mention it's now easier to do an instant high pogo jump. Overall the controls feel much more tight and refined. Keen also rocks a new set of moves. He can now shoot in four directions, yes, even down when mid-air, climb poles, duck, flip switches and one level even puts him in a scuba diving gear. Awesome! Keen also has the ability to express how he feels about today's pixel art. There's a lot of new gameplay elements too, trapdoors, passages, flying platforms, switches, traps and tons of new enemies. The last two, traps and enemies, are affected by the difficulty setting. Depending on which you choose, there are more or less traps active on the levels and enemy placement is different. Still, even easy can be quite challenging since Keen dies in one hit. The dying animation never gets old, Keen bumps off everything that would kill him accompanied by a simple jingle. But what's that you just heard? Was that actual sound? Not a PC speaker beep? Hell yeah! Commander Keen no longer uses the PC speaker, instead using actual adlib or sound blaster cards for cool sounds and amazing music that I've been playing in the background. Although you can still use PC speaker for sound effects while leaving the adlib music on, 
though that sounds like some kind of MS DOS Frankenstein's monster. Ew. The game world feels a bit more condensed though. The first game has you going into almost every level in order to finish the game, and in the second one you need to finish all of them, no exceptions. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. At the end, you don't feel like you've skipped a lot of content. Goodbye Galaxy is my favorite Commander Keen game out of all of them, and that shouldn't be a surprise since it's basically better in every way compared to the previous one. If you want to start your adventures with Keen, I think this is the one you should start with.